So Tarbo and Wavy, today I got this one right here, the continued decline of Overwatch 2, let's track it. What's up everybody, this is the Act Man here, up, and man? today is the day, that's right. We have finally gotten a long awaited update on Overwatch 2's PvE mode. Now Incredible. this is the most highly anticipated feature of Overwatch 2 that unfortunately had to be delayed. What we saw back in 2019 blew our balls off. Not only would Overwatch finally be getting some story driven content but yep. also a separate progression system and a talent tree for every single hero there was so much creativity behind some of these new abilities like may turning into a snowball or soldier damn forgot all about that move with his healing field and on top of this blizzard was boasting that they were making hundreds of missions endless replayability provided at the top tier level of quality that blizzard Insane. used to be known for this was their comeback story. The release of Overwatch 2 was very underwhelming. I called it the laziest sequel ever. But now that Blizzard is done wiping their ass with the millions of Benjamin Franklin bills they earned from Diablo Immortal microtransactions, oh my God. it's finally here. It but, but the sad thing is that they are successful with it. This is like short term success, I guess, but still, they got success out of it. That's a problem. Update on Overwatch 2's PvE mode. Overwatch 2's PvE hero mode is being scrapped. Yep. Because it's it's not profitable, Our I guess. Our expectations for you were low, but holy fuck. What happened? Where's the fucking How? game? Well, there's no game here. What happened? Did the programmers pass out? This like, it's literally a scam from a multi-billion dollar company. It's insane much confirms to me that the only reason overwatch 2 was released at all was to change the business model get rid of loot boxes add in a shitty battle pass and sell cosmetics for 20 dollars yep. beyond that i can only imagine overwatch 2 launched with three new heroes but they had to take two pre-existing heroes out because of new bugs that were introduced at launch players noticed that several classic maps had been removed for seemingly no reason only to be added back later. Why was Overwatch 2 not launching with a PvE mode? Why was it taking out pre-existing content that had no issues? The only thing that made Overwatch 2 at least to some kind of start event, I would have done that. Too worthy of being called Overwatch 2 was the upcoming PvE mode. Like not not to reduce content, uh, content obviously, but something where the people can see the potential of a PvE mode, but. Not something like this. It's Which was delayed and is sad. now completely canceled. Indeed. So what the hell was the point? <laughs> what was the point in any of this? We are shifting our plan none. for Overwatch 2 to enable you to play it sooner. This starts with us decoupling the PvP features of the mate. game. You see his eyes? He is the devil. From the PvE system. Believe me. So we can bring you PvP sooner. What the fuck are you talking about? Why? Why do you want to get the game into my hands sooner? Can you maybe put a better game in my hands at a later date when it's ready? No. This is what I don't get. No. Why was there a rush to release the PvP content? You only added three new heroes. Because of investors, I guess. And all the other changes were... And this is why Jeff Kaplan left. This is why he left that early. He knew that this was going to happen, but this is... It was guaranteed to fail. That's a thing. And, yeah. When he was gone, I, uh, I just lost all my hopes. Like... I'm not even surprised about this, but yeah, it is what it is, I guess. We're so minimal. Hell, back in 2022, Aaron Keller said, a few years ago, we made the call to focus our team's development efforts almost entirely on Overwatch 2. And as development of the sequel stretched on, it meant that the live game received less focus. He explained this meant that the company was no longer delivering on one of its core values to support the game by updating it and delivering content on a regular basis. So they abandoned Overwatch 1 to work on the sequel, something that they regret doing i mean obviously game yeah. development is hard and all that what? and sometimes there's been a change of plans but come on man what have you guys been working on this entire time how could you advertise overwatch 2 and make this mo i think the game developers themselves the game developers the people who worked like a hard on this shit, they try to do something but the higher ups they fucked everything up so don't blame like the small worker ends you, you can't do that they are working hard but uh, but the true enemy are the higher ups. That's just the truth. So please stop blaming like specific people on Twitter, like uh, who work on this game, just because they are part of Blizzard. Just flame the higher ups, I guess. Like they definitely deserve it, but but not those people. Like they put really hard work into it, and they're probably sad themselves.
they can't release their content, which we have, have worked so hard for. Like, you see all this potential, but it's gone. Mode one of the biggest focal points, and then just abandon it. Set. That seems real scummy. But the worst part of it is, this shit looked really fun. Everyone had their shit to talk about. Uh, Overwatch 2 not being yes. a sequel. But everybody was hyped for the PvE. We now, to be fair, they also announced a new roadmap, which is kind of meant to soften the blow. So it looks like there's going to be a ton of new content. Fuck off. What is this mobile game's roadmap shit? Like, you get... Let them talk. Let, okay. let so them talk. At the very least... PvE is dying so that PvP can continue to thrive. So let's talk about Overwatch 2 and the continued decline of Blizzard because uh, some of the reasons why they canceled this mode are quite interesting. Obviously, this is a huge blow and they say they're still working on hero and story missions, which is, you know, it's going to be something. I don't expect it to be all that great, to be yeah. honest. You know, they're working on story content, stuff that people have been asking for since the game came out in like 2016. There's a guy Imagine named that. Sir Swag who is a pretty credible source. And he talked to an anonymous Blizzard employee about why the mode was canceled. In what might be the most unsurprising thing in the entire world, the very first thing he said was that the cancellation was, quote, a 1000% upper management executive issue. In the words of this employee, the decision to scrap the PVE was very much a decision motivated by Blizzard's profit margins. You don't say. You don't you say. You don't say. <laughs> you don't say. I'm and not surprised at all. I'm Diablo not fucking surprised at all. Over $2 million a day shifted the expectations of the higher ups of the like, I've watched exactly Blizzard's work video. Uh, good one. Go watch him. Go subscribe to him. Terrible source and good content it's like top tier company to the suits overwatch 2 not like my reactions <laughs> PV. I'm joking, subscribe to e mode wasn't Peace. going to keep generating money in the long term and had become increasingly more irrelevant next to a live service business model. Did I call this or what? Live service has become the biggest killer of creativity in the industry by far. Game development seems to have shifted towards being results driven as opposed to fun driven. I called this out in, in my video on live service. You know what? Depends. It really depends with live service games and why it, it's a graveyard for creativity. Why live service business models throttle creativity because every decision is now made with make more money, make the most amount of money. Yep. Um, we get to really take the gloves off and do crazy things like Junkrat can do wield grenade launchers and have what mercy be able to area effect res their whole team at once at super long range through walls it's been a ton of fun kind of like mad scientists making all this stuff yeah well Damn. not anymore you're not if this is to be believed yes the reason the mode was canceled money because they saw how much money diablo immortal was making and they were continuing to pour resources and development time into this mode that probably would have kicked some serious ass but but, but money but you need more money uh -huh. uh -huh. where's the money uh -huh. Yeah, you like that? That feel good? Even if Overwatch 2 didn't make $2 million a day, don't you think this big-ass PvE mode would draw in a bunch of players new and old? And if they really enjoyed it, and they would spend more money on the game? No. That's not how modern gaming works. But yep. what do I know? All right, so I'm gonna put my headphones on and uh, we're gonna watch this this video. Uh, tweeting about a roadmap saying it's coming mid-May. Uh, it's been, a, been on my timeline a lot. Uh, I do have an update. We're gonna run through the roadmap today. Uh, we're gonna talk about what's coming in future seasons. Uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna talk a bit about uh, PVE. This is the reason why they have the roadmap it also coupled with this announcement that they're cutting PVE is specifically to soften the blow yeah. in case you were wondering it's a uh, it's a little pr tactic so we had a difficult choice to make we could continue working on our original vision for overwatch 2 without a definitive end date in sight or change our strategy and get something in front of players sooner we could continue making the game that we fucking marketed or we could say screw it and just put out the laziest possible product a pretty easy anything for a quick back blizzard yeah choice for anything. old blizzard we chose the latter and we released overwatch 2 last october with new heroes 
new maps, new modes, and regular seasonal updates. And also new glitches, a, a great new feature that removed Bastion and May from the game for what, like a fucking month or three weeks? But more what? than that, that we shifted our values for how we want like, to. I was playing it intensely at the, at the launch and um, yeah, I knew that most characters, most heroes weren't available because I, I didn't main shit like May or Bastion. But yeah, I, I thought it was just for like one week or something. Was it really like three weeks or one month? Can't remember. Can't remember. To develop the game. You sure did shift your values by starting to charge people, what, 20 bucks for skins? Charging them like four times what the skin was previously worth in the original game? What was that stat about like it would take you 712 a... years to, to get the amount of credits necessary to unlock all the cosmetics in the game without paying for them. It was some ridiculous stat like that. Yes, your values did shift it. You became more greedy and you became a shittier company. Yeah, and I really can't say enough about how much we've learned over the past eight yeah. months or so. And more importantly, we, we've taken that so much. and put it back into the game. So as, as early as season two, I think you start seeing some, some updates we've made based on your feedback and based on what we've learned. Um, we've been changing all of our systems. We've been adjusting hero balance way more frequently. And these are good changes. I'm not going to lie. These, they have been making good changes to the PVP. I think it's been getting a lot better and the game is still very much fun. I still enjoy it. I'd enjoy it more if there was a, you know, big PVE mode, but that's just me. But at the same time, development on the PVE experience really hasn't made the progress that we would have hoped. The team has created a bunch of amazing content. So, you know, there, there's awesome missions that are really exciting. There's brand new enemies that um, are super fun to fight uh, and some truly great uh, and ridiculous hero talents. But unfortunately, the effort required to pull all of that together into a Blizzard quality experience that we can ship to you is huge. Blizzard and quality there really experience. is no end in sight. Yeah. This is probably the most yeah. confusing thing to me out of all of this. There is no end date. Uh, the, the amount of effort it would take to, to create this mode that we advertised is massive. You're fucking Blizzard. You have uh, like uh, 8,000 people working for your company. What do you mean? You're the company that made World of fucking Warcraft and the Diablo series, both games world renowned yep. for their progression systems and their talent trees and their deep customization. If anybody can do this, it's you. <laughs> what? What did you just lose all your talent? What, did you just stop caring? We don't have yeah. an end date in sight. Well, Most of them left, especially like many people from the from the starcraft team or warcraft 3 team who, who who worked like so hard on uh, in blizzard they they all left like most of them and i think we created a new company and they are currently working on a new rts game i don't know when it's coming out i don't know if if it will be successful but i'm pretty up for it one reel back those ambitions you don't need hundreds of missions when the pve mode comes out you don't need expansive talent trees for every champion at launch okay just give us something would it have been too hard to, to give us like 20 missions and like half the roster has has their talent trees all set up yes yeah that would be too much but unfortunately the effort required to pull all of that together into a blizzard quality experience that we can ship to you is huge I also love the statement Blizzard quality because Diablo Immortal exists. That's a Blizzard quality game, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Slot machine simulator. That's a Blizzard quality game. Overwatch 2 at launch was a Blizzard quality game. God damn it. Do we continue to pour all that effort into to PVE, um, uh, hoping that we can land it at some point in the future? Um, or yes. do we stick with- Yes, yes, yes. With this set of values that we've aligned on and Focus on the live game and focus on serving all of you. Also, focus on the live game. This is the crux here, okay? And it kind of falls in line with what Sir Swag said. A PvE mode, is it's not part of the live service necessarily. At least that's what I'm gathering. What that means is that we won't be delivering that dedicated hero mode with talent trees, um, that long-term power progression. Uh, those things just aren't in our plans anymore. Fuck, that would, oh man. That would have been so awesome, dude. Because there are so few good no co-op shooter games. Like, I always go back to Left 4 Dead 2. Back 4 Blood kind of sucked ass. Redfall has sucked ass. Maybe Shit. Borderlands, I could play that. But as far as like games you play with your buddies and you all like rank up and bro, level D, up. Bro, D, bro, Galactic, that's the game, man. Continue to tackle that's harder challenges. Shit. Like, that's why I love Vermintide 2. I still need to play Dark Tide, but I'm just... Wow, damn. Vermintide 2 was such a great experience. It, it was fucking great. Like, I don't know how, how many hours I've in it, 
probably like 200, but definitely worth your time. Combat is so satisfying. The true successor for Left 4 Dead. But sadly, with n no modern weaponry, I guess. It's like the fantasy version of Left 4 Dead. <laughs> oh, god damn, this would have been so awesome for Overwatch. And I would have played the shit out of this with my buddies, man. And instead, if I want to play Overwatch 2 with my buddies, I have to convince them to play the same mode in the same game that came out in like 2016. You know what I mean? And we know that this is going to be disappointing to many of you. Which you don't say! Which is why we wanted to bring it up before we talked about the roadmap. This is why we brought it up before the roadmap, so so we can we we have something to soften the blow. <laughs> to be perfectly honest, it's been really difficult for for many of us and, and a lot of folks on the team who poured their heart and soul into that into that stuff. I also feel yeah. bad for the teams that essentially are having their work erased because of corporate greed Sad. and this continuous desire to always monetize the shit out of everything and focus on only that and, and not so much the quality uh, of, a, of a video game or how expansive and innovative it can be. And like I said, man, live service games is where creativity goes to die. We're planning to make co-op gameplay and co-op experiences just part of our live roadmap. So we, we want you to be able to experience it more often. Just part of it. Well, this is what Overwatch has been doing the whole time. These little limited time events that people would only play for like an hour or two at most on some random weekend. It's yeah, most of the time it was just a mission which was like the same one year ago, two years ago, three years ago. It's like Jack and Sands event all over again, I guess. Like they, they're going to make a new one, but who knows, maybe they just re reuse that one too, like... I'm not sure. You know. But I would not be surprised. It was fun, but this... We wanted a much more dedicated mode. This comes across as, yeah, we're just gonna keep doing those same limited time events. Hardly exciting for me. Let's bring up that roadmap uh, that Jared was talking about because Jared, there is a ton uh, coming to Overwatch 2 soon. And again, like I said, the roadmap looks pretty expansive. And I imagine most, if not all of this content is gonna be great, except maybe the Roadhog rework. I'm not sure how that's gonna work out, but you know, it's the PVE mode would have done so much good for this game and for its community. And it is such a shame. You also notice how they don't apologize to the fans. It's like, oh yeah, we're, we're cutting this feature. Ah, uh, yeah, it's, it kind of sucks. We couldn't fit our vision. Anyways, look at all this other new content that we're working on. Forget about the PVE stuff you were looking forward to. And wow. it's even going to come with like new story features for the game, Sad. like a lore database that players can unlock over time. I'm going to make a, a real quick prediction about the story missions. I hope I'm wrong. I imagine for each season that they launch new story missions, they're going to have one cinematic, kind of like how Call of Duty does it. You're going to have one cinematic and then the missions are going to basically play out with someone talking over a radio the whole time telling you what to do and saying that what you're doing is great or whatever. It's going to be very, very fucking basic. That's my prediction. Come back yeah. to this video uh, when season six launches and let me know if I was right. That's what this roadmap is about. It's about, about showing you all of the work that we're putting into this game. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. No, I don't think it is, Mr. Keller. Call me, call Not me enough. a tinfoil hat conspiracy theorist, but I think this is just your guys' way of softening the blow for something you decided to cut because of money. Because you want to make more money. And Those that's it. You want to put in the least amount of effort for the biggest return on investment. And, and what you're showing us here is to satiate players and fans that are upset. That's just my theory. At the end of the day, I'm just a big fucking nerd like all, all of you. And the reason I get so upset is because I care, is because I loved Blizzard and I still love Overwatch. And you know, it, it just, it doesn't- Been there since Brood War. Not anymore. Doesn't seem like this, this is the best decision. Seems like corporate greed once again in the world of modern gaming. Let's see what Twitter has to say. They've probably been working on the two looking as good as possible on the logo. <laughs> Porn community keeping Overwatch alive after all these years. Oh my God. Oh, my back. They've been working on Overwatch Immortal. True. Don't you guys have phones? It seems so clear to me now. This clip truly aged like fine wine. Blizzard competing with Halo Infinite in disappointment. Let's see this. What is it? That stench. 
I've smelled it before. <laughs> oh Classic my game. god, dude. I was I was fucking on <laughs> fire. I called that, man. That's insane. All right, so now let's take a look at the GameSpot article and see if there's anything worth discussing. This is what's kind of crazy, though. He was talking about back in 2019. It's been maybe two and a half years since the last hero that we launched. And we don't want to be back at the point where it's another three and a half years since launching a PvP map. It just seems like you could have done all of the work that you did on the base game of Overwatch. And, yeah. and that game would be in a much better state than Overwatch 2 is. Big truth. Maybe that's just my theory. I don't know. I, we keep hearing them talk about how the scope of the hero missions was really, really large. I don't, I don't really know if like the changing it to just five heroes against other fives. Uh, I don't know if that was like a good decision. Like six made it really unique because it was not like the other games with them. It's always like five people, but they said that it was like not balanceable. Is that a word? But but yeah, I don't think so. I think they they could have worked something out. Like use your brain a bit. Don't don't ju just choose those really simple solutions. And for me, it doesn't feel like. I watch anymore, to be honest. Stand is like, why don't you just reel that back, right? 40 to 50 talents per hero for over 35 plus heroes. You're looking at thousands of talents to make everything just to get the game out the door. I would be fine if you didn't have all of that completed when you launch the PVE mode. I think most people would, right? Why Why couldn't this mode also be part of the live service? You know what I mean? Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, th this is a long what? interview. You could probably read it if you want to yourself, but I feel like at this point, I'm kind of just reiterating everything uh, I've already said Same. before. So I guess that's it. I'm not surprised at all with Blizzard. I also just wanted to complain, man. Go leave a like, go subscribe to the Eggman and do the same exact thing to my channel as well. I would really appreciate the support. I want to get the 1k sub as soon as possible. Would be nice. And yeah, I guess that's it. And I guess see you next time. Wafer. Out.